Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Caleb sent me a note. It's a Steve crazy story about the mail out of Pennsylvania. And there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here, but you should be aware of this, but it's also just a weird story. Uh, exclusive from CBS 3 out of Philadelphia. Upper Darby police arrest two men who stole hundreds of thousands of dollars in mailbox theft operation. Mailbox theft, they stole hundreds of thousands. How'd they do this, you might ask? Well, Joe Holden wrote the story and says that two suspects are now in custody after a postal carrier was robbed late, late last year. So the man was robbed, he's a postal carrier, but police believe that the robbers, while they robbed the guy, managed to get their hands on a tool that allowed them to steal mail from post boxes. So you know the old style blue box, you walk up and you open the door and you put your mail in and you close it. Somebody comes by later and unlocks it and removes the mail. That key is what they stole. But the problem is that it's a kind of a master key. It doesn't open just one box. It opens all the boxes in that zip code. So if somebody has the one key, it opens all the boxes. So it wasn't that they got hundreds of thousands of dollars by robbing the mailman. They got the key that allowed them to break into the boxes to steal the mail. And then here's what they did. So two guys are first accused in the strong arm robbery of a 58-year-old postal carrier back in December. They allegedly obtained what's known as an arrow key, an arrow key, allowing them access to those blue post office mailboxes. And that, again, is the ones where you drop off mail, the little door. Detectives allege the pair then went on a spree stealing mail to get checks out of the mail, washing the checks with acetone, and then rewriting the checks and making the checks payable to themselves in amounts up to tens of thousands of dollars. And uh, the Upper Darby Police Superintendent said that for mail carriers, it can be a dangerous job. In this case, it was. Very fortunate that nothing happened to the mail carrier because mail carrier is okay, but it's the stealing of the mail. So people know that they're mailing checks and people, believe it or not, mail cash. Well, I'm not sure how much cash got stolen because it sounds more like the issue was with the checks getting washed and rewritten. But police say what made this scheme so profitable is that the single key opens every mailbox in the zip code. So it's the kind of thing where somebody probably thought, this is going to save a lot of time. <laughs> we can just have one key open all the boxes in one zip code. And of course, one person gets one of those keys, and now you got problems. Court papers show the police used home camera systems in the area of the robbery and smartphone tracking technology in developing their case against the two men. A warrant revealed the suspects had in their possession 348 personal checks, from that area, 348 personal checks. Police now advise people to stop mailing checks and money. So stop mailing checks, stop mailing money. Um, there are people in my audience, whenever I mention checks, especially people in Europe, apparently checks are considered so old fashioned in Europe, people go, wait, you guys in America still have checks? <laughs> yes, we do. And I'll admit, I occasionally write a check or two. It depends on the situation, but there are there are things that I like to write checks for. Um, the um, police superintendent said, it's a sigh of relief that we're able to catch these guys. Again, the investigation is still ongoing, and the Postal Inspection Service is going to be notifying anyone that we believe or they believe could be a victim in this case. Investigators say more charges are possible and say there is an unknown number of victims yet to come forward. So... Here's the situation, and by the way, it causes two problems if your check got stolen. So let's suppose that you're, you're, you're an old fossil, <laughs> and you write checks to, say, your power company. You write the check for your power company. So you write a check to, you know, power company, and you stick it in an envelope, you, put over, you go over and put it in the box. And unbeknownst to you, somebody comes by later with an arrow key, opens the box up, steals the mail. They open up your envelope because they recognize it's going to have a check in there. They find the check, they pull the check out, they wash the information off of it, they rewrite it to themselves, and then they pay themselves some money. First problem you have is that your power bill didn't get paid. That's the first problem. First problem is your power, didn't, your power bill didn't get paid. Number two, if you're not watching out, you might not catch the fact that that check got stolen, or you might discover it, but obviously after you discover it, the money's gone. 
and there's an issue there. So there's two problems that happen to you if you wrote that check. So it's a weird situation, but one of the things that I would urge you to do is, and, and this is getting easier by the day, is that you can, almost any bank out there, go to an online site and look at your bank account. And so set it up to where you can look at your bank account and double check it from time to time. And so I actually, every single day, there's a few things I do every morning when I get up in the morning and I first get to my desk. When I get to my desk in the morning, I, I open it up, you know, the computer, and I, and I look at a bunch of websites. And one of the websites I look at is my bank. And I glance at the bank statement that's on the screen to see if it makes sense and to see if, you know, any, anything's, any activities occurred lately. And of course, if I myself have banked, I would see my own activity. And if something pops up, I don't recognize it'd be a problem. Now, I'll admit, I've never had anything pop up on my bank showing a problem of that sort. But I'll also admit that I still occasionally do use checks. Now, I've started transferring over and doing almost everything electronically because doing stuff electronically, the reason I didn't like to do it was that a canceled check is a great thing to show somebody, I paid you, here's the canceled check. And if you go online and pay a bill online, it'll often say, oh, you paid your bill, here's your confirmation code. And it's like a 35 digit thing with upper and lowercase numbers and whatever. And you, 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 okay, do I copy that down? Do I hit print? What do I do with that? And now the hope is, well, they just generated this thing and sent it to you. Presumably they've got a record that you paid. And there are companies that will email you a receipt. And so would you like us to email you a receipt? If they email you the receipt, that's probably just as good as getting a canceled check back. Until you realize how easy it is with a printer to dummy something up that looks like an emailed receipt, you could, you could claim, hey, look at I got this, and they'd be like, what's that? But I've never encountered that problem either. I know it's a matter just for me that I liked having canceled checks that showed that I paid somebody something. And the few occasions that I still use them are the occasions pretty much where it's not handy otherwise. And by that, I mean, for instance, like I've had somebody do work for me, like literally come over to my house and work on my house. Now, I could pay the guy cash, okay? I could cut the guy a check, or, well, I, 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 I suppose I could ask him what his bank account information is and wire him money, but I'd rather just cut him a check. And he doesn't mind me cutting him a check. So I cut him a check, he cashes a check. I can go online and say, hey, oh, there I, I, I paid the guy. There's, there's the canceled check right there. And there he is. Oh, he cashed the check. Now, I've also had situations before I've sent people checks and they didn't cash them for the longest time. I had a guy I sent a $600 check to. And, and I forgot all about it. And so did he. <laughs> Almost a year later, this guy calls me. He goes, hey, Steve, I'm really embarrassed. I go, what's that? And he goes, you sent me a check for 600 bucks about a year ago? And I said, okay, sounds, sounds about right. <laughs> it's been a year since we talked. Why? And he goes, I just found the check. Is it still good? And I go, I think it is. I said, but, you know, take it to your bank. And if they don't, if they don't process it, let me know and I'll, and I'll send you another. And it, I guess it probably hadn't been a full year because they gave him no grief and the check cleared. But I remember the guy calling me going, Steve, I got this check. <laughs> and there's, there's situations like that. And also, um, I know a lot of people like to pay their taxes with a check. Now, you can electronically direct deposit your money if you're paying money to the IRS. Uh, I'm pretty certain you can do that. But one of the interesting things about the IRS is that the postmark on your envelope is the day that you get credit for having paid your taxes, even if they haven't gotten your, your check yet. And so uh, I know that in some cases, people who owed them lots of money mailed them checks during COVID and the checks didn't get cash for months and months and months. <laughs> they still got credit for having paid it on time and the money sitting in an account someplace earning interest. Not a lot of interest these days, but a small amount of interest. But hey, every penny adds up. So it's a crazy story out of Pennsylvania and the postal carrier who got robbed, well, that wasn't the end of it. That was the beginning of it. And they got his master key with the master key or the arrow key went out or stealing mail out of the drop boxes washing the checks and then paying themselves money. They got caught, but now they got to go back and try to figure out how many people these you know guys did this to. 
And there's probably some people who haven't even figured it out yet. That's the sad part. So great story from Caleb. Thank you very much, my friend. Upper Darby police arrest two men who stole hundreds of thousands in mailbox theft operation. Joe Holden wrote it for the Philadelphia TV station, CBS3. Questions, your comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. A woman's mind is cleaner than a man's. She changes it more often.